All right, guys, yeah, welcome back to the continuation of uh, lecture series on information retrieval and text mining. Uh, the last time we looked at how we can compute the time frequency inverse document frequency. Today we shall be looking at uh, how the various ways we can actually represent our query vector, that is the user query vector. We expect that our IR system has an interface with which the user can supply their query and we can decide to process that query. Or we can uh, implement the query the, in such a way that the user can have the flexibility of entering the width of any of the terms in the query. Typically, the query vector is treated the same way we treated the uh, document in the corpus. Uh, and it's also TFIDF weighted. Another alternative is for the user to supply the weight for the given query. For instance, if you have a query that contains database text and information, the user can have also an opportunity to key in the weight of each of the terms, or it could be unweighted. Now, similarity measure is a function that helps us to be able to estimate how close a query is to a particular document. And essentially, you measure similarity between uh, the query and each document in the corpus. So similarity measure is a function that computes the degree of similarity between two vectors. So using a similarity measure between the query and each of the document, then we can run the retrieved document in the order of their relevance. And it's also possible for us to put a cutoff so that uh, like we have in Google rank, maybe like the, the return we just read in the first, first page, you just have maximum of 10 uh, links. So what are the things that we, uh, the, we want uh, in a uh, similarity measure, in similarity function? Uh, we want that if there are two documents, D1 and D2, if D1 is similar to D2, then we expect that D2 to be similar to D1, that is, their vector to be near. And if D1 is near D2 and D2 is near D3, then definitely we expect D1 not to be far from D3 in their vector. That is, the direction of their vector not to be far away and even the, the angle between them. And uh, no document should be closer to D than itself, document D than itself. So here are some of the uh, like uh, four ways in which uh, uh, four functions that can be used to measure similarity between two vectors. The simplest one is the inner product. We have the dice coefficient, we have the cosine coefficient, and we have the jacquard coefficient. For somebody that must have done something in the field of computer vision and uh, object detection, you will clearly see that jacquard coefficient is the same thing as the intersection uh, of over union, intersection of union. Okay, that is being used in object detection, uh, banding box and measuring how, how it overlap with the grand truth. Anyway, so we can decide to measure the similarity by either using uh, the weighted term vectors, which means each of the vectors, each of the term has a weight, or we just use a binary term vector, which is uh, like a boolean, meaning that whether the term is there or is not there. So and these are the formula. But in most literature, what is being used is the, co the cosine uh, coefficient, uh, maybe the, in the inner product. So let's see the inner product, how you measure the similarity between vectors for the document J and query Q can be computed as a vector inner product using the formula. So the same is our function, which in this case is the inner product function. It takes in document J, the vector, and it takes in query Q, the vector. And what it just does is it uses this formula. That is VJ intersection Q or summation dj q so and that's what you have here so if you are using the weighted form that means you are going to look at each of the terms uh, in the corpus look at each of the terms in the corpus and you 
you get the weight of the uh, weight of term i in document j multiplied by the weight of the same term i in query q then you go to the next term uh, the next term maybe i equals to 2 so the weight of term 2 in document j multiplied by the weight of term uh, 2 in query q essentially just iterate through over the terms in the query because you expect that if a term does not occur in the query then definitely the whole of this will just be zero and the terms in the query will be fewer anyway so where the the ij is the weight of term i in document j and the weight of term i in the query so for binary vectors the inner product is is just is the number of match query terms in the document that is the intersection and that is why we do x intersection y so we just check the number of terms in the query and see uh, those terms in the document so the match is just the inner product for weighted term vector it is the sum of the product of the weight of the match item so you have to use the weights okay just use the weights that's what it's saying so you multiply the weight in the document multiply by the weight in the query plus in the next term so some of the product of the weight of the match terms an example will give us a better intuition let's say we have this document and this query and want to measure the similarity between now in this document we have retrieval database architecture computer checks management information those are the terms and now this is represented as one or zero so one means that it is there and zero means it's not there of course you will see that the query contains smaller number of terms so in the query we just have four terms you have retrieval you have architecture uh, you have management you have information okay so and you will see here that uh, we have computer even though computer does not occur in both uh, the document and the query but definitely computer occurs in all the uh, document in the corpus so this is a representation of all the terms in the entire collection of documents so in this case the time the size of our vector size of our vocabulary is seven because we have unique seven distinct terms and the zero means corresponding term is not found in the query so how do you measure the similarity between uh, the weight uh, the similarity between the document and the query so essentially what we do is this to measure the similarity between the document and the query we just like we said the, the intersection just like the formula we say that is the number of match query terms in the document so you just look at what match so retriever is in both size one architecture that's two management is that's three so that's just symbol three that's for the binary uh using the binary uh approach now if you want to use the weighted approach then you need to give us the weights so let's say we now have document one document two and the query and they gave us the weight of each of the terms so see term one has this weight term two has this weight and likewise in document two so we can plot in a high dimensional space the query d1 and d2 and all the terms and uh, definitely you can see that uh, the query is very close to document one compared to document two so how do you measure is the sum of the product of the match terms so you have t1 here you have uh t1 here if you multiply just this one will give you zero you multiply the way this is zero so the only one you have here is uh this one will just be uh one times two so between document two and q so this is the only one that match so one times two so it just gives us two here it's the only one that match that's t3 so it's a 2 times 5 and this gives us 10 
so you will see that this is lower so between uh okay so this gives us 10 this gives us 2 then we now need to do the the cosine of it so we do the cosine of d1 and 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 d2 so we do the we do the cosine so the similarity between this between d1 and q is 10 similarity between and uh, d2 and q is 2 so this similarity here is higher so this gives us uh this is that means d1 is closer to the query compared to d2 so we pick the higher the highest number okay or we can definitely use the cosine similarity which is just the same thing that uh, the cosine so measures the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So we already calculated the inner product. This is the inner product. Then we divide by the, we normalize by the vector length. So the inner product we normalize by the vector length and this is the normalization. So what we need just to do is just the normalization, which is the summation of all the weight in the document and in the query so we do that for each of the documents so for document one so we have this for the query is so simple we just uh, do the square of each of the weight which is just two square it gives us four it's the same thing here uh, for document 1, we square this, 4, 9, 25. For document 2, 3, 49, 1. Then we get the square root, then we have 0 0.81, 0 0.13. So we can see here that uh, document 1 is 6 times better than D2 using the cosine similarity but only five times better using the inner. So you can see that the similarity is higher. So you have 0 0.81 is 0 0.81. You pick the highest one here. Of course, if you do the, you get the angle of this, you definitely have a higher angle here compared to this. Okay, so that is how we measure the cosine similarity um, measure between the uh, the document and the query to be able to know how how close or how similar is the query to the document. So in summary, the vector space model is simple. It maps everything to a vector. It compares using the angle between the vectors. The challenge is mostly finding good weighting scheme, whether to use the TF-IDF or time frequency or IDF or variant of it. Another challenge is comparison functions. Cosine comparison is the most common, money use. You can also see the inner product also being used. You can consider both the TF and the and the global idea of what occurrence we looked at this one before the time frequency is the number of times a time occurs in a particular document why the inverse document frequency is the uh, total number of documents divided by the number of times the time occurs in the entire document and we just use the log before it it provides partial matching and rank results that's we've seen that Definitely here when we want to return, first of all return Q document one before document two because it has a higher cosine similarity. And it works quite well in practice, so it's mostly used. What are the problems with vector space model? Yeah, the semantics, the meaning of the world, because once we just put it in a vector, we don't really know uh, the meaning of the world is is lost. Uh, so the meaning of the word is not taken into cognizance. Missing syntactic information, phrase structure, and last control of the Boolean model requires a term to appear 
in a given document. For instance, given two terms query A and B may prefer a document containing A frequently but not B over a document that contains both A and B uh, but both less frequently. So these are some of the challenges there. And now if implementation convert all the document in the collection D to TFID how we mentioned all this. Uh, convert query to a TFID with a vector for each document in D compute the scores between the document and the query then sort it and present it to the user. Uh, the time complexity of course as you see here it will be in the number of uh, vocabulary multiplied by the number of documents and that's a lot you can see from this place so it means that for each of the document in the collection that is the vocabulary size then we now have to multiply by the uh, we now have to multiply by the the term. So we take each document and in each document we have to do cosine similarity between the document and the query and that will be over each term because for this alone we have to go over each term. So this is bad for large uh, for large uh, vocabulary and uh, large document collection. So based on the observation that document containing none of the query keywords do not affect the final ranking so we can use that to uh, help some heuristics. Once a document does not appear in the query we can just quickly eliminate documents that don't contain uh, the query words. So try to identify only those documents that contain at least one query keyword for comparison at this stage. So this will be less now. Okay. Thank you for listening and uh, see you in the next one.